Ethical hacking is pretty self-explanatory and yet rather mysterious. What do ethical hackers do on a day-to-day -day basis and how can one become one? Well, your questions about ethical hacking are about to be answered because I'm about to interview Sam Humphreys, who's a security strategist at Exabeam. Are you ready to demystify ethical hacking? Before we get into it, I wanted to thank Exabeam for sponsoring this video. Exabeam is a security management platform which provides users with a smarter CM technology, which stands for Security Information and Event Management. Exabeam supports overwhelmed security teams, allowing them to detect, investigate, and respond to cyber attacks in about half the time. Cybersecurity is such a fascinating field, and it's time for the interview. Hi, Sam. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, how are you? Doing well, thank you. How are Excellent. you? Excellent. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Well, I'm very excited to hear more about today's topic and mm -hmm. let's just jump straight into it. What is ethical hacking? Cool. So I wanted to just kind of talk about hacking, first of all, because I think that um, ethical hacking, hacking can sound a little bit like an oxymoron because like people think hackers are like bad, they're, they're like hoodie, bad guys. There's a lot of bad press. Um, you know, you think about that stereotypical hacker guy, you know, it's, it's a guy, right, first of all. And like first news, news flash is that hackers aren't all men. Um, but just to dig in a little further, um, if you look at the Hacker Manifesto, which was a thing that was written about 30 years ago now, there's a closing statement which reads, um, yes, I am a criminal, my crime is that of curiosity. And so hackers, as a, as a group, really like to learn about kind of how stuff works, um, how to modify it, and in some cases, how to break it. Um, and there is definitely a kind of a substrain of hacker, which are kind of the more stereotypical folks you think of, like attackers, um, cyber criminals, people who do bad stuff, but that's not the entire kind of hacker, hacker family. In fact, there's a huge community of hackers. Um, there's thousands of us that descend on Las Vegas every year for something called Hacker Summer Camp, where there's a series of conferences. And yeah, there are folks who turn up for that that are maybe not um, doing it for the best reasons, but there are a lot of people there who were just curious and they want to understand how things work. So ethical hacking is about taking those skills and using them for good. So um, it is definitely still offensive security. So you are, you are going on the attack, um, but you get some folks kind of in one corner who um, they do kind of vulnerability hunting. There's a whole um, like bug bounty program. Now there are third party companies who do this. Um, but some organizations offer their own bug bounties and they ask people to come and actually find vulnerabilities for them um, and they will pay money for that. So the idea being is that people will find the vulnerabilities and tell them before somebody bad finds that vulnerability and uses it for nefarious purposes. The other kind of big piece to this, and I think this is more kind of the traditional idea of ethical hacking, um, are penetration testers. So um, a penetration test is really going in and trying to find holes be that in a website or a program or even physical security. So can you actually get through into a building? And can you get in as far as the server room? Um, can you get into a specific device? So there's lots of different kind of substrains. Um, so the physical bit I find really fascinating. I've got friends who kind of have like wardrobes full of clothes that they use to go and like dress up as delivery people or um, I don't know, like telephone fixing people that kind of thing and they've even got kind of personas they've created with id cards and like they really 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 go into it but i kind of if you just to step back the kind of ethical hacking really is to break it down hacking for good reason it's not hacking because you want to just um either you've got kind of a, a problem with an organization and you want to take out your broth against them um so it's kind of the it's the, the friendly end of the spectrum for sure that's a great definition and you've kind of touched on it already, uh, mm -hmm. the offensive versus defensive. Could yeah. you give a quick definition of the red team versus uh, the red team versus blue team, so that you know everything's clear? Yeah, sure, sure. So, kind of red team is the offensive end uh, of of security. So people who are really trying to go in and <laughs> break things or, or find vulnerabilities so they can be fixed. Um, the blue team side of things are the defenders. So um, you can have a, a formal red team of people in an organization that are that really they're responsible to 
potentially test systems, test applications. Some of them are even part of kind of the development process. So as part of testing for, um, a, say, an, an internet connected device or a new web application, something like that, they're brought in ideally before that thing's released and to really put it through its paces to see where the vulnerabilities are so they can be fixed before that goes to market or is brought online. Um, the blue teamers are kind of the, the security operations folks who are there looking for bad things. So they're kind of the other side. And you can actually have um, exercises where you can put the teams up against each other, um, which can be known as purple teaming, where you bring both together. That's awesome. Um, and I did not know about the purple teaming. Uh, that's, that's a wonderful combination of colors. <laughs> And you've already touched on this as well, but could you please mm -hmm. expand more on why is ethical hacking important and what kind of companies need those kind of employees? Right, got it. So, um, I mean, it's important for the, the first reason is, I mean, the vulnerabilities will exist whether you find them or not. So really, you want to find them first before somebody bad finds them. Um, so it's, there's no point kind of sitting there thinking, well, if we don't go looking for it, it's not going to be a problem. Um, you know, it, like I say, that those vulnerabilities are there regardless. And it's, it's rare that a piece of code is written um, and there aren't vulnerabilities in it. I mean, vulnerabilities are found in, you know, the software from the biggest companies in the world down to, you know, devices that are made in a small room. And then if you look at physical security, um, you know, there will be vulnerabilities there again. It's historical that people have really spent a lot of time looking at the perimeter. Um, but once you get, once you get within that, then um, things aren't always as solid. So, and that's sort of the first piece a lot of the time within ethical hacking is understand kind of how do you get through the perimeter. There's another way of looking at it of sometimes like a pen test may start inside with the assumption that they would get in anyway, mm. um, which is I think a good assumption to make. If somebody wants to get in to um, either through a website or through physically into a building, if they want to get in hard enough, they'll find a way. Um, but then what happens when they get in? What layers of defense do you have? And being able to work through that and understanding how hard it would be for somebody to get through that, that's really kind of I think one of the, the key pieces to something like a kind of more formal organizational wide pen test. So what kind of companies need ethical hackers? most of them is probably the right answer there. If you have code, if you have um, IP, then it's worth having some form of either pen test brought in by a third party company, um, or in some cases, organizations will have their own teams internally that, that perform a whole host of different roles. That sounds like a crazy job. Mm. <laughs> What does a day-to-day -day of an ethical hacker look like? <laughs> um, it depends what you do. I mean, I said earlier, I've got friends who kind of have their kind of costumes available and their like fake personalities that they live and breathe. Um, so that can, I think that's kind of the super glamorous side of it, of like trying to con your way into a building. It all sounds a little bit James Bond. Um, but some folks will be spending time more working with development teams on applications and devices. And there's a huge reporting aspect to, to pen testing as well. So it's not just kind of doing the cool hacky stuff. Um, you need to be able to, to communicate to an organization or your own organization what you found um, and ideally what they can do about it. Uh, you know, the, the first piece is being like, yeah, yeah, I've got it. But then that's only part of the puzzle, being able to, to make sure that what you found can be dealt with. Um, so the reporting piece is huge. The other end of the scale is kind of the, the research piece. So if you're doing something that involves, say, social engineering, be that creating phishing emails or trying to get past you know, the security folks or the receptionist to get into a building, to understand kind of who the people are, um, scouting the physical building, even understanding the supply chain. Because say if you turn up and you say, well, I'm from X company that does your electricity, and then it turns out that it's a different company altogether, you're not going to get very far. Um, if you're trying to send an email that looks like it's come from the supply chain, again, you need that information. So there's, there's the research end, there's the actual kind of doing the, the hacking bit side, and then there is the, the reporting piece on the other side. Yeah, that's a lot of different moving pieces, and I can imagine mm -hmm. that requires a lot of different skill sets, of course. Yeah, very much so. What are the qualifications that an ethical hacker needs, essentially? So there are, there's a lot of formal qualifications you can go and get, um, some of which are very expensive. 
So, um, and some less so. So I think one of the first ones was the Certified Ethical Hacker certification that you could go and get. Um, SANS do a bunch of courses. Uh, the kind of gold standard one is OSCP, which is the Offensive Security Certified Professional. Um, that said, there, there's a lot of informal things that people can do as well. You don't have to think, right, I'm, you know, I really want to go and be, a, be an ethical hacker. This sounds super cool. Oh my God, I need to spend thousands of dollars on getting certified. Um, there, are, there are loads and loads of ways that you can learn from you know, even you know, traditional books through to, I mean, obviously YouTube is a marvellous thing, um, Twitter, and there's a ton of different conferences and things you can go to as well. So um, the qualifications bit, I'm, I'm not downplaying those at all. But I think um, if you're interested and you've got a security background or an IT background, there's a journey that you can start down without kind of laying down $10,000 on doing a course. And you've kind of um, relayed into my next question, which is what, what is the typical career path into ethical hacking, if there is one? Uh, does someone require a specific background? And can someone get into ethical hacking without having mm -hmm. a computer science degree, for example? Right. Um, I think there's, there's a few pieces to this. Some of it are kind of personality traits to some extent, or just an interest. So the, the curiosity piece is, is really important. I think that's kind of a, a first thing. But career paths in can really vary. Um, I, I know folks who kind of are the cyber criminals kind of turn good, for want of a better phrase. Um, who were kind of doing the script kiddie bedroom stuff and have now decided that they actually, you know, they've grown up and they want a real job. I'm not saying that everyone should start their ethical hacking career in cybercrime. Um, it tends to be more folks coming from, um, they've had a bit, some sort of IT background. They've moved into security and there's a bunch of reasons why people join the security industry. Um, tends to be, you know, you do have some sort of interest in the protection side of the house, but also kind of the, the bad stuff that goes on as well. So having that background is really important. Um, but I don't think there's a, a typical kind of, if you do this, do this, do this, do this, you'll get there. People come into it from, from all sorts of backgrounds and people also cross train as well, which I think is really important. Um, I've seen people go from kind of the defensive side of the house and think, right now I've learned this. I want to go, I want to go the other side because I know how people defend. Therefore I'm going to be better at attacking. Uh, and I've seen people go the other way as well. So they've, you know, they've spent a lot of time doing the, the breaking and now that stands them in really good stead for understanding the mindset of an attacker because they've actually, they've been an attacker, ultimately one with a, a contract and, and the scope, which is kind of the, the big difference between pen testing and, hack, and like attacking. Um, so yeah, it's, I find people come from all over the place, which is good, right? I think there's no, you know, you can't kind of qualify yourself out um, and there's lots of ways in and lots of places to go and learn. That's amazing. And um, it, it's wonderful that these skills and all of this knowledge, it all ends up being useful, right? It all ends up mm -hmm. building on each other and understanding the mindset of different people and especially coming from different industries. I'm sure that's also a plus, um, a huge plus when it comes to that. And where would you recommend for people who are um, starting to get into this route? I'm sure there are some people who are watching this video and got super curious. They're like, I'm the curious person who wants mm -hmm. to go uh, into that profession. Where would you recommend for them to start? Are there any resources that you would recommend or anything mm -hmm. else that you'd like, you'd like to share? Yeah, sure. So I think, I mean, if you're coming in and you don't know anything about IT at all, <laughs> you have to kind of start there. It's kind of a given. But assuming you've got some IT knowledge, you've got some security knowledge, um, I would start with, there's a few places really. I mean, there are a lot of YouTube videos. Um, you can like get yourself a Kali Linux, fire that up and start learning things from videos that lots of people like sharing their knowledge. So there's lots and lots of kind of how to's getting started courses, which are going to cost you very little other than your time. Um, Twitter, whilst it can also be a bit of a cesspit, um, is an amazing resource. So there are a lot of people, there's a huge, huge community of security folks that are on Twitter um, who can introduce you, not only, I mean, you can follow them, you can see the kind of things they're up to, but there are a lot of meetups that happen, albeit not in person right now. Um, but there are, and even down to kind of Zoom happy hours where you can just kind of get to talk to people. Um, and 
you know, if you're not feeling like you want to jump into a room full of people you've never met before, um, you know, there are people who offer mentorship one on one, but there's plenty of places to go read. Um, certainly, I mean, there, there are books as well. Books still exist. And if you're thinking about kind of where do you want to go with it? Because there are so many different, so many different journeys you can take. If you think, oh, I really, really fancy that kind of physical hacking thing. Like what skills do I need there versus sitting, you know, sitting in a room, being able to try and break into in through a website, that kind of thing. Um, so you can learn about things like um, body language and other kind of social engineering skills as well. So that that I think is another fascinating piece to kind of add to your skills beyond the, you know, can I write code? Can I write an exploit? Once you kind of you got to learn a little bit, there are some um, there are sites like Hack the Box is one of my favourite. Um, Hack the Box is a kind of an online website where they've got it's basically boxes you can hack um, with different skill sets. So you kind of you can go through in your own time start with the basic ones, see if you can finally get through and, and do all, all the different hacks that are required to get through that kind of, um, it's almost like a physical test, I guess. Um, so that, that's a really good place to go. And that's, I wouldn't go there on day one, because the first test is whether or not you can figure out how to register, and it's not obvious. You need to do it, have a little bit of skill before you can even do that. Um, but that's, I mean, that, again, that's a great place to go as you're, as you're kind of honing your skills and thinking, right, you know, is there something in this? Have I picked up enough to try it? Uh, and, there, and there are other sites like that as well. That's awesome. I, it's wonderful that there's so many different resources. And mm -hmm. like you said, there are also books that people still read. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> we sometimes forget that, uh, especially being uh, isolated right now and, you know, everything's virtual. Um, and yeah, talking to people, talking to professionals. That's awesome. Yeah. One of my favorite, favorite things about the security community is something called B-Sides. Um, now, B-Sides is, uh, there are B-Sides events that happen all over the world. Now, a lot of them um, right now have either been kind of um, cancelled or um, have gone virtual. But these, even in the old world when we went to events, they're very low cost to attend. They are for the community, by the community type events. The only test, uh, sorry, the only charge maybe a, a few dollars to get in, if that. Some of them are free to attend. And they have a really, really um, kind of wide selection of talks that go on. So the, the talks aren't, aren't sponsored by big companies or anything like that. They are, uh, people can submit their ideas for talks. They're generally voted on either by committee or by the attendees. Uh, it's slightly different at different B-sides. Um, and the people there are always super nice. Um, so if, you know, if you're a student now and you think, mm, you know, am I going to, people are going to think, well, you know, you know nothing, you can't come here. It is literally from people, for people who are thinking about it through to kind of people who've been doing it 20, 25 years. They'll even have things like um, little villages where you can go and kind of have a go on stuff. So things like, like lock picking is a type of hacking, understanding how the lock works. Can you, can you get through it? Can you break it? Um, there are car hacking villages. There are uh, so many other physical things you can go and look at, as well as the talks and as well as the social aspect. So I would thoroughly recommend um, finding one of those in your area because there will be one. There's, they're everywhere. You've expanded my view on what is hacking so much through this interview, and it's been incredibly insightful and just, I don't know, that industry is so fascinating to me. Thank you so much for shining more light on it and giving the resources for everybody who is planning to or thinking about getting into the industry. That's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam, for demystifying the profession, what their day-to-day -day looks like, and also how one can get started in ethical hacking. I will leave all the resources that Sam has mentioned during our interview in the description. And also, if you got hooked and want to learn more about how blue teams counter red team attacks, I will link an awesome video by Exabeam in the description and also up here. Follow Exabeam on social media for other great content on cybersecurity. Again, I will leave all the links in the description. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in becoming an ethical hacker and why. Like this video if you've enjoyed it and share it with a friend who is interested in cybersecurity. Subscribe to this channel not to miss any other content like this and we can also be friends on other social media. You can find me as Coding Blonde. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.